Now, before we get deep into this Mercedes behind me, let's talk about similarities you'll see with a lot of luxury cars out there in the market. For example, this Audi has an air suspension that's adaptive. It's very similar to what we'll be working on behind us in this Mercedes uh, GL350. This Audi SUV, if we peel away this outer skin and look at the system for its semi-active, or if you will, uh, active suspension, we have a compressor like you would have with any vehicle with air dampers, air shocks, or in this case, air springs. Those air springs slash dampers at all four corners are going to do the job of a set of springs and shocks or McPherson struts. And the compressor, instead of just leveling the vehicle solely, you know, for good load level managing, like when you load the back of a trunk or you'll say you put a trailer hitch on the back of an SUV and the vehicle dips down, and the sensor kicks, you know, tells the compressor to kick on and we air up the air shocks or in this case air springs. It's going to go a little further than that. It's going to give you adaptive ride, whether it be with a push of a button to give yourself a different ride height and a different ride characteristic, sport, economy, whatever, but also respond to changes in what's going on with the road. So we see level sensors, we see dampers that have air releases, we see a compressor, we see a valve block. All these things on the Audi you see in this block illustration are also on the Mercedes behind me. So a lot of similarities, maybe some name changes, which is typical between OE and OE, but you get the picture, you learn one, and you can pretty much adapt yourself to learn them all. All right, well, in this RL350 Mercedes 2011 model, the big major components we see on the right photographs of the compressor on the center and the bottom, we see that valve block for controlling solenoids that control the flow of pressurized air to the top left picture, uh, the air suspension uh, damper, the spring damper assembly. Now, looking at a little buck diagram from Mercedes, uh, you have the very bottom in the center, you have the ABS module. What's the ABS module involved here? It knows information like wheel speed sensors. And are we into a stability control issue? So the ESP module, that may be called from a Mercedes, is involved, as would be the steering angle sensor. How much input you're putting into the steering wheel. That's going to affect the suspension and ride height as you make a hard turn. One side's going to want to pull up, the other side push down. We can compensate somewhat for that by stiffening one side and softening another. Also in the very center, of course, the main brain of the unit, the airmatic module that does the controls, the pump we see in the very top just to the right of center. And we also see an input from the lower left and some other spots around this illustration with a CAN bus network. We see the signal acquisition modules, one or two, whatever that's on this particular car, the SAM modules, and we also may see the engine control module involved. Information such as when you let off the gas pedal very abruptly, even before you hit the brake pedal, the assumption with the electronics on the vehicle is we're getting ready to hit the brakes hard because we let off the gas really fast. And the quicker you hit that brake pedal, the more we confirm that we need to do a couple of things. We maybe need, if it's hard enough of a brake pedal apply, maybe even get the airbags ready and the pretensioner set ready to activate on the shoulder belt and lap harness. Also, we might actually stiffen the shocks and the struts, or the airbags, I should say, the actuators, in order to make dive from braking less of an issue. Also, hit the accelerator hard, and now we're going to have lift from acceleration. Those can be almost eliminated with a semi-active or active suspension system like we have with the Aromatic. Within about 14 milliseconds, we can make these these airbags, these dampers, softer or stiffer to make a lot of control changes very quickly. We also will have the bumps from the side as we have sideways movement, lateral accelerometers, as well as the actual position sensors that will be between the fixed part of the chassis and the moving part of the suspension that moves up and down like this. This particular Sus uh, suspension position sensor, and as you look here, you'll see three terminals inside of here. It's the potentiometer, just like a throttle position sensor 
or a mode door motor potentiometer. They work the same way. A zero to five volt signal is going to go into that aromatic module, control module, and it's going to look to see if we on, are we on, not only are we compressed down because we got a lot of load on the vehicle and it's squatting down, maybe more in the back because you've loaded the back end of this SUV, or are we on a rough road? Are we on a smooth road? We're seeing this kind of a delta rate of change movement of this potentiometer. On a rough road, we're doing something more abrupt. All those issues can be recorded, especially from these guys on simpler systems that use solenoids to control the valving of shocks or struts, or in the Mercedes, control the airflow of the input and the exhaust of air into the air dampers or the air, uh, air, air springs on the vehicle. Can do it very rapidly, and along with, of course, the complexity we've mentioned so far, a lot of complex diagnostics.